Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. If you are looking for a lightweight and compact star tracker, then the Nomad Tracker for MoveShot Move is the perfect one for you. And in this video I will tell you why I think it is the best compact tracker on the market and why you should buy it too. As always, first I will show you the specs of this tracker. Then we will go out and take a few test shots and after that we will come to the conclusion. First of all, I would like to thank MoveShot Move for providing me this tracker. I received the basic kit, which includes the Norman tracker and the laser pointer. The tracker is very compact and weights only 430 gram, but it is impressive that it works up to a load capacity of 3.5 kilo. It has a three position switch on the right side and it can be used to set the star tracking in the northern and the southern hemisphere. If you leave the switch in the middle, the tracker is switched off. The Norman tracker is made of high quality aluminum and you immediately notice that it will be run for many years to come. This compact housing also contains a powerful battery that can run for full 5 hours. There is also the option of connecting the power bank to the tracker via USB-C, so it can also be recharged. The construction is very simple. You unscrew the top cover and mount the ball head with a 3 quarter inch screw. When the ball head is mounted, screw the cover back onto the normal tracker. Now you only have to screw the laser pointer onto the thread on the back. The laser point is very stable, so that will eliminate it any chance of wobble. The track has a built-in ARCA switch mount, so you can be mounted directly on the tripod. When the tracker is set up, you have to find the north star with the laser pointer. If the sky is a bit cloudy, it's sometimes difficult to find it. Then I used the Stellarion app. Here you can search for the north star and set the laser pointer in the right direction. And now you're ready to go. First we will test it with a wide angle lens. For this I will use my Sony 24mm f1.4 G Master in combination with my Astro modified Sony A7. If you apply the 500 rule, that means 500 divided by the focal length, then I shouldn't expose more than 20 seconds without a tracker before the stars turns into lines. Next I will try my Sigma 100 to 400, where I shouldn't expose more than 4 seconds at a focal length of 100 and no longer than 1 second at a focal length of 400. But let's see how long we can expose with the tracker now. Okay, here you see the first image that I took with my 24mm f1.4 and I've used exposure time of 10 seconds without a tracker. You see it here, 10 seconds f1.4, the 24mm f1.4 G Master on my Astro modified camera Sony A7 and I've used an ISO of 800 and you see the stars are round and in the edges, a little bit of coma, but that's due to the lens. But all in all, a clear image, but you see already a little bit of noise here at an ISO of 800. And here you see the Orion Nebula. On the next picture, I've used now the Nomad Tracker and I have set the ISO on 100 and I've used an exposure time of 30 seconds and let's zoom in and you see the stars are still round. We have here the same amount of coma like on the picture without the tracker. And all in all, a very good result. And the tracker has done a very good job here at 30 seconds. And on the next picture I've used an exposure time of 53 seconds and I've put the ISO on 100 and let's zoom in. On the middle again pinpoint stars here very sharp and on the edges there's no difference to the untracked image. All in all a very good result. It was a little bit cloudy on this day, I'm sorry for that, but all in all a very very good result. And if we compare now the two images here, the tracked image with an exposure time of 53 seconds and an ISO of 100 against the untracked image with an exposure time of 10 seconds and an ISO of 800. You see on the first look both looks very clear and sharp. But what about if we zoom in? In the middle we see very good sharpness on both images. We have no lines here on the tracked image. You see here the Orion Nebula on both images and what you see directly is we have less noise here on the tracked image. And if we go to the right corner, 
here you see the same amount of coma and on the left side here again we see no difference in terms of sharpness and we have on the tracked image the same amount of round stars like on the untracked image and if we go down the trees are blurred out of course because the right picture is tracked and the left is not so all in all for wide angle lens a very very good result but what about if you use the Sigma 100 to 400 mil? Here I have used a focal length of 100, an exposure time of 6 seconds and an aperture of f5. And I've put the ISO 4000 and you see of course a lot of noise but the stars are very sharp. And you see no lines over the image here. A very very good result. Here the Orion Nebula and on the next picture I have used an exposure time of 10 seconds, a focal length of more or less 110 mil and I've put the ISO here of 2500. Sorry for the clouds but they come more and more to the images now but I've tried my best to capture here the Orion Nebula without any clouds. And if we zoom in you see we have still round stars and on the edges Again, very round stars without any lines and a very very good result from the tracker here but let's take it a little bit further and now we go on 400 mil and here I've used an aperture of f6.3 the exposure time of 50 seconds course 400 mil and the ISO on 4000 and we see on the first look the stars are still very very round let's zoom in here you see the Orion Nebula Let's go to the right corner, round stars, to the left corner, round stars, a very very good result and without tracker the maximum exposure time were more or less one second before the stars begin to get lines here. And here you see the final picture from the Orion Nebula, for this I've used an exposure time of 30 seconds and an f5.6, an ISO of 500 and I've changed the lens to the Tamron 28-200mm to 200 mil. and this image is not stacked, it's a only single exposure image and I'm very happy happy with this result. Of course you can get much better result if you took multiple images and stacked them and used a professional software for astrophotography but this was a single exposure. I've used here only Lightroom and I think for a quick editing it's a very good result. Welcome back. As you have seen the Norman Tracker achieves very good results. I did not expect such a good performance. You can not only take pictures of the Milky Way with wide angle lenses you are also able to shoot deep sky objects with the telephoto lenses and that is not obvious for such a compact tracker. MoveShot Move has really created a little masterpiece here. It is very easy to install and you can get started in less than one minute. The best thing about it is that it's so small, light and compact. It is the most travel friendly tracker that I ever used. My camera backpack is already heavy enough with the cameras and lenses inside and the tracker doesn't add much weight and its compactness means that it fits almost anywhere in the backpack. I'm really impressed about the tracker and from now on it will come with me on every astrophotography tour. I would like also to mention the great support from MoveShot Move. I had a few problems with the tracker at the beginning which were partly my fault. MoveShot Move did everything they could to solve the problems. I haven't seen this kind of support from many manufacturers. So if you decide to buy the Norman tracker there you will definitely not be disappointed. I will leave also a link down below in the description. What do you think about the tracker? Do you see it different than I do? Feel free to write it in the comments down below. And if you like this test, I would be happy if you can leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions, please write it in the comments down below. I will try to answer everyone. See you next time.